Okay, so before we even start this video, let me just say Kai Soto has the goods. I'm predicting right now, not only is he going to be in the NBA within a few years, which I only say because he's not even old enough to be drafted, but I also think he's going to be putting up some serious numbers too. Okay, pause. I made that video eight months ago, and a few things have changed since then. And with a couple stories breaking as I speak, I thought it would be a good time for an update. It was my strong opinion that when I made that first video, Kai was one of the most talented 17 year olds in the class of 2020, especially for a kid who was 7 foot 2. And it was almost certain the extremely talented Filipino was going to the NBA, no questions asked. But let's bring it back a bit. Some of you may have heard in early May of 2020, Kai Soto decided to skip college, similar to the other Filipino we've been talking about, Jalen Green, who, if you aren't familiar with, you could check him out here. He's also Filipino and is expected to make some major noise professionally. Anyways, in consequence to Kai's decision, he has now become one of the first international prospects to sign with the G League and things are looking quite promising for the 18 year old. Yeah. He just turned 18 a few weeks ago, so happy birthday, Kai. He's been training in Atlanta at the Skill Factory, where he's been receiving mentorships that are preparing him for the highest level of play in the NBA. They typically train Atlanta Hawks players and have even seen some very big names in their facility like James Harden, so we can assume he's in good hands. But for now, we're just gonna have to wait and watch him play in the G League this up and coming season to really get the full picture. So, you guys can expect a third update in the coming months. In this video, I want to explore what's possible for the young Hooper. We're going to take a look at the larger context that could give us some interesting insights into what kind of career he could have. What is up guys, it's your favorite coach's favorite editor. Drop a like if you enjoy content like this, cause those can really help. And if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well. Kai Soto has been in the spotlight for years, well before he finished high school. He was offered $1 million as a sophomore to play professionally in Real Madrid, where he probably wisely declined. He would lead the Philippines national team shortly thereafter. Needless to say, he dominated in high school, was named the number one player in the country two years in a row, and consistently averaged nearly 30 points a game and shot at roughly 60% from the field. He's been widely compared to Yao Ming for reasons I'm not entirely sure about, more on that soon. And although it's possible you have heard of him, in the Philippines he's a huge deal, no pun intended. He has arguably the best and strongest fan base of any player his age. Well, maybe. And most importantly, he may well become the first full-blooded Filipino to not only play in the NBA, but excel in the NBA. But let's bring it back to the present. What can we expect? Firstly, I thought it was interesting that the Olympic Channel reported Kai's dad, Irvin Soto, who was also a former basketball pro, explained, Kai is expected to keep growing, suggesting he would be roughly seven foot six. Although I think I might be a little more excited about that than Kai. I love to be seven three. Maybe not over a 7'5". And we have seen this before. Giannis Atentacumpo was drafted at 6'9", and is now pushing 7 feet. Just an interesting side note to keep in mind, he's still so young. In my opinion, for his size, Kai Soto moves surprisingly well. He has good post moves, a great drop step, and abilities a spin counter. He's left-handed but reportedly ambidextrous, and his outside stroke looks promising. He clearly needs to add strength, but again, he's only 18, and that should happen with time. I said it before, and I'll say it again, he doesn't play like Yao Ming, rather, he reminds me of a young Robert Swift, and considering he has a good head on his shoulders, he could develop into the player that Robert Swift was supposed to be. My favorite thing about Kai Soto is his attitude and the appreciation he has for the people that have supported him throughout his career. Kai said it himself, he's ready to make basketball a full-time pursuit, and he's ready to continue to develop for the next two years of his life to actualize his dream of joining the NBA. And if you didn't think he had enough to work for by now, it's also quite obvious by his social media presence, he's big on making his country proud. He loves his fans, he's a humbled hard worker, as well as a very smart and talented athlete. If anyone was gonna pull it off, it might just be him. I mentioned in the previous video his dad wanted him to play in college, Gonzaga was showing major interest, and briefly it appeared he may end up there. Obviously now this isn't the case, he's a part of a small group pioneering a very different path. 
He signed with the G League in mid-May of 2020. The deal is reportedly worth roughly $200,000. He will effectively be getting paid to train in the US with one of the best programs in the world. This year's newest head coach being Brian Shaw, a highly respected former NBA player and coach who is openly very excited about getting these guys to where they want to be. But as we explored in the previous video about Jalen Green, although he is certainly making more money this way than the traditional route in the NCAA, in the long term there is risk with his NBA stock value depreciating, playing against such elite and determined talent. However, two standout coaches of the Philippines and PBA champions, Norman Black and Yang Gayo, strongly agree he is making the right decision. They would then add that two major pros of playing in the G League is the elite development process. The training here in the States is different because they really like focused and my trainer really dedicated themselves to help me get better as a player. And, quote, you are guaranteed that every single game, you're gonna have NBA scouts in the gym watching you play and develop. These guys obviously have a lot to say in the drafting process and could easily arrange a great deal assuming they like Kai Soto. When I made that video almost a year ago, I had two major concerns of potential NBA setbacks in Kai's career. Number one being his shot. But as time has gone on, and especially since that video, he has proved he's willing to shoot the ball, and it goes in. Now more than ever, I can easily see him developing into a major threat offensively from anywhere on the court. And number two, we have to think about him defensively guarding legit and established NBA centers. As of right now, and especially eight months ago, I couldn't see him guarding Giannis Antetokounmpo, Joel Embiid, Kristaps. I mean, the list goes on. I'll say it how it is, he would get bullied. But again, very fortunate for him, a bigger defensive presence is something that could be easily developed, especially compared to traits like shooting or passing the ball. And that's really it. He's such a well-rounded athlete and plays basketball really well for a kid, now adult, who's well over seven feet. You guys can expect another update, so stay tuned for that because I am really excited to see what develops here. Also, I want to take a second here and thank our sponsors, Infinity Wake Aqua Bags. They're truly leading the way in developing basketball players using techniques we've never seen before. If you want to check them out, the Instagram is the top link in the description. Anyways, it's your favorite coach's favorite editor coming to you from your favorite 50,000 subscriber hopefuls, Cortical Hoops. See you on the next one.